Inland taipans favour the soft, deep, earthy plains. It's here the rats do well. Hey Rob, I got him. Is that what you're after? One of them? Yeah, that's him. Um, that's a little plane track. Cute little thing, isn't he? A noisy devil. <laughs> he fast, I know oh, that. He's so going your arms a bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Already, there are a few rats around after the rain. The taipans will be up and hunting. You know, you wouldn't think anything could live out here, would you? No, she's very barren country, this place. <laughs> Can you see what I can see? Looks big. Deadliest thing on this planet. No hospitals out here. Who's going to catch it? I reckon we should flip. You got a pen? I've got one. Head's yours. Very cool. All yours, cool. yours mate. Thanks, mate. Not a problem. This one, do you? Oh, okay. Right. Oh, great. Robbie, you yeah. uh, grab some water and spit venom all down my leg. I'll put him back in the bag. Long way from hospital, mate. Not wrong. You wouldn't think his skin would absorb it either, but it does. And in the back of my hand too. Okay. Rather be safe than sorry out here. This brush with the inland taipan becomes an omen. A few weeks later, one of his own captive inland taipans bites Robbo. He's only the fifth person bitten. The venom devastates his body. As soon as I realised I'd been bitten, um, my first thing was to get a pressure bandage on. Uh, that's the best first aid. I grabbed the bandage from behind the cage where we keep them in case of an incident like this. Uh, applied the bandage to the limb and just mobilised it. Now that bandage, what it does is it prevents the venom from travelling through the lymph system and it prevents it from getting to all the major organs, so it buys you a bit of time. The bite was an accident. John bumped the snake's head as he returned it to its cage during routine cleaning. When his friend Robbo is bitten, Rob Breddle travels to the Barossa Valley in South Australia. Tucked away in the famous vineyards is Australia's largest supplier of venom, Venom Supplies, and researcher Peter Merchant. Actually, I'll just show you what happens uh, when you get bitten by Peter Merchant milks an inland taipan and uses the venom to show just what a devastating effect it has on Robbo's body. It's more than twice as poisonous as its coastal cousin, but produces only a fraction of the venom and has much shorter fangs. Factors critical to Robbo's survival. As soon as I realised I'd been bitten, um, my first thing was to get a pressure bandage on. Uh, that's the best first aid. I grabbed the bandage from behind the cage where we keep them in case of an incident like this. 
uh, applied the bandage to the limb and just mobilised it. Now that bandage, what it does is it prevents the venom from travelling through the lymph system and it prevents it from getting to all the major organs, so it buys you a bit of time. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just put a tiny bit of venom, the venom I just milked from that inland type end, just a small drop into the blood, and we'll mix that up, mm -hmm. give it a good shake, mix it up, and in a very short time we'll notice that it clots. And we'll compare it with this other one here, this one here. Once I got the pressure bandage on, I came out the front of the... Uh, the pub, the Etamoga pub, and I found somewhere nice and warm to sit, being cold in the morning, and I just sat here nice and calm, kept cool while I waited for my ride, being the ambulance. I mean, what I'm going to do is show you what happens to these two blood samples. Uh -huh. Now, this is the one we didn't put any venom in. Uh -huh. You can see that ro runs down uh -huh. there quite nicely. Now, just have a look at this one. This is the one we put the inland type end venom in. If I can get it out of it. There she is. There she is. The first symptoms I noticed once I was in the hospital um, were sweatiness. I was starting to get a bit of a temperature and feeling quite queasy. Um, I also had a lot of pain around the bite area. The actual muscle went all red and swelled up quite large. My arm just around the bite area. It was actually so sore you couldn't press on it or touch it. The next thing I noticed was the uh, lymph gland under my arm was swelling up like a golf ball. So I knew the venom was well and truly in the system and on its way. What happens normally in most snake bite cases is uh, you get a lot of little tiny clots, millions of them throughout your body. And then it uses up one of the clotting factors in doing that and creating all those little clots. It uses up one of the clotting factors in your blood mm -hmm. so your blood won't clot. So you, you've got a condition in your body where you're very susceptible to bleeding. And it made my eyes really sore like someone had thrown salt in them. Um, and I was getting blurred vision. Especially in the brain, that's the most susceptible area. By then the headaches were so bad, um, the doctors put me on morphine. I gather that's not all that happens to your blood either, eh? No, let's just have a look at these two pictures. Uh, that's a picture of normal red blood cells, mm -hmm. normal human red blood cells. Now, when they're exposed to venoms, you can see they change their shape quite dramatically. They even look pretty though, don't they? They look pretty, yeah, but you imagine trying to pump those yeah, tiny uh, so. things through your blood, uh, little tiny blood vessels. Yeah. Those ones there with the spikes no, on them. Yeah, those ones there with the spikes on them are a lot harder to pump because they, they rub across mm. each other and it create a, a blood that's much more viscous. Mm -hmm. So it's you thicker, got, isn't it? It's thicker, it's thicker, yeah. All right. So the big problem there is uh, you can starve blood to certain organs in your body. Oh, right. So you can and have you, organ failure. You can have right? organ failure. Oh, right. You can have multiple organ failure. Yeah. Once all the blood tests came back and it showed that the venom was in my system and starting to cause damage, the doctors wanted to administer an anti-venine. Uh, in this case, I was reluctant to receive it because uh, working with these reptiles and never taking an anti-venine before um, and feeling like I was on control of the situation, I refused this anti venine. Now, um, I would have accepted it if things got worse, but we seemed to have stabilised through the night, and by morning I was starting to come good. The blood properties were returning to normal. So, in this case, I didn't need the anti venine. Myotoxins actually break down the muscles, they split open the cell walls, and all the stuff in the, in the muscle cell gets into the bloodstream. And what's that do? Well, it, it's another way of taking away the strength of an animal by breaking down the muscles. And of course the secondary uh, problem to that is because all that stuff getting out in the bloodstream, it's filtered out by the kidneys and if there's too much there, it causes a kidney failure. Even three weeks after the bite, the venom was still interfering with my system. It interfered with the messages sent between the brain and the heart, which caused a mild heart attack in this case. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the classic symptoms of neurotoxic poisoning. It, it blocks the message from the brain to the muscles, so you might have droopy eyelids, uh, slurring your speech, uh, and dribbling. Now, over a period of three weeks up until my heart attack, I had actually lost 11 kilos of weight. Using the mildly venomous brown tree snake, Robbo explains that snakes only bite with good reason. Now, the reason snakes bite people is because they usually 
feel threatened or they might feel like their life is in danger. Now with this snake here just sitting here freely like this, he's not interested in me at all. If I was to sort of squeeze this snake and restrict him, he should actually bite me to tell me to let him go. Alright, here he goes. Okay. Now see how they chew and they pump that venom into you? Okay, sometimes, because I've got him restricted, he'll hang on. But the minute I let him go, he'll feel like he can retreat. So if I let him go now, he should let go of me. See? Now, immediately he'll let go because he thinks he can escape. Now that snake has just let go from where he's bitten me, you can see the two big large drops of blood. Now that's where the fangs are injected into the skin. Because these fangs are a lot larger than the other teeth marks, they'll draw more blood usually. Now the other little dots of blood, the tiny little ones, they're his teeth. Now all snakes have teeth, even the venomous. So if you're bitten by one of these snakes, usually you'll have two fang marks and some scratches or tiny little puncher holes where the teeth also scratch or make contact with the skin. Deadliest snake on the earth, eh? Mm -hmm. this fellow, he's had a couple of rats, you can see the lumps here. Lump, 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 right down here, he's full of rats. See the big bulge there. Well, the reason I think he's out is because a few million years ago when the mountain ranges got pushed up, the taipans got split into two. And this one followed the rats down to this Downs country. Made it his home. I think so. He's a rat eater like his cousin, but this rat's are smaller here, so he's not such a long snake. Well, actually, this he's different to the coastal taipan. He's got shorter fangs, more slender head. I reckon for his size, he's more chunky too. Probably the reason why his fangs are shorter than the coastal taipan is because his prey is a lot smaller. But his venom is much more potent to kill it quicker. Neither taipan hangs on to their prey, they both bite and let it go. And their venom is so potent it kills it very, very quickly. Well, they say one bite from this one can kill how many thousand mice? Oh, I've got 240,000? Well, something like that. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, 180 times more deadly than a king cobra. It's amazing to think that venom on your skin could kill over a hundred people. It's incredible, eh? Yeah. For two or three months now, thousands of inland Taipan eggs have been developing under the vast silent plain. The surviving clusters have remained cocooned and isolated in deep, dark burrows and cracks, insulated from the ravaging heat, wind and rain of the world above. They're ready to hatch. The fully developed miniatures contained by the eggs grow restless. As they squirm and twist, a minute egg tooth brushes the shell, creating small slits. Baby heads poke through to test and taste the world about them. They take their time. It may be several days before all the young finally give up their viscous crib and go out into the world. The egg tooth is a small sharp point on a scale on the nose, immediately above their mouth. Without it, the baby would remain trapped. Snakes don't have the chicken's advantage of a tough beak to break through the shell. This tool is lost almost as soon as they hatch. Once out of the shell, the young snakes live on a reserve of yolk inside the stomach. This gives them just enough start to find their first meal. For baby inland taipans, the nature of that meal remains a mystery to us. They're far too small to take rats or their young. The solution seems to lie in the profusion of small lizards found almost anywhere in the bush. After food, 
the most important issue for the baby snakes is survival. At this size, they're an irresistible snack for just about any predator. From now on, for the next couple of years, nowhere will be safe for the young snakes. Most of the thousands of babies hatching in countless burrows right across the inland will never reach adulthood. For one baby, time is running out faster than most. The King Brown follows the scent trail of a newly hatched inland taipan. They're not fussy eaters. They eat the rats, and if they get a chance, the taipans too. The King Brown is a cannibal and well equipped for the job. This strong muscular snake is immune to all venomous bites including that of the taipan. Its venom is 40 times less effective than the inland taipan's venom when used on mice and rats, but its effect on other snakes is devastating. All over the bush, the predators are harvesting the annual crop of young reptiles. This is how nature's plan works. These losses mean that those that survive will do well enough to perform the most important function of their life. Breed to ensure the continued existence of their species. Over here, John. Rob, I always notice you always pin your snakes instead of tailing them. Well, I don't catch them by the tail because I've seen the old man get whacked too many times like that. He's had lots of close shaves. I've seen him with snakes hanging off his pocket, under his arm, yeah, across his shoulders, so I don't tail them. I pin them. Too dangerous for me. So you reckon I should change my technique while I'm in front? Should. Yep, yeah. I reckon you should, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I should actually, actually tell you the story of that inland taipan bite. It's a beauty, and I'll tell you as the old man tells it. Mit the actions, and mit the accent. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. That story An right. inland taipan <laughs> yeah, bit Rob's father, yes, Joe, not technique. far from here, oh, and he barely survived the bite. Okay. Okay, just imagine me hats the fierce snake. I jumped down, and from the corner of my eye, I see this big fierce snake. When he stood up, I knocked him aside with my jigger. And as he went into the bush, I grabbed his tail. When I pulled him back, he came out and went whack on my chest. The next thing he latched onto my chest. Then he was a very happy way. I was <laughs> not. I looked, I swung it away from me and looked down. When I saw the couple of drops of blood coming through my shirt, and I said, well, Joe, this time you've done it. I threw him away, and I looked down, and I see the spots of blood. And I thought to myself, Joe, you've really done it this time. It's a worry. <laughs> Is he still around? Survival of the fittest has special meaning in Australia's impoverished landscape. It's a continent that rewards efficiency. In a country where the variety and volume of food is always uncertain, taipans are now the best mammal hunters of all. No other snake has the devastating combination of size, speed and venom that truly entitles the taipans to their place as the world's most dangerous snakes.